Tennessee was being settled by people from the Carolinas, Virginia, and even places to the north there. People found a really fertile area in Middle Tennessee. It was called the Barren Plains. A lot of people moved there, including one family, uh, that of John and Lucy Bell, their children, and a few of their slaves. They came from Edgecombe County, North Carolina, and settled at a place known as the Red River Settlement. John Bell and his sons would rush out. Every time they would hear this banging on the wall, they'd rush out and wouldn't find anyone anywhere. <laughs> Could not find a culprit. Lucy Bell had a simple answer. John and his sons just weren't fast enough. So she and Betsy ran out. They couldn't find anything either. And then after the family would go to bed, they would hear these things that sounded like chains being dragged across the floor, sometimes even bricks hitting the roof of the house. And John and Lucy Bell would get up and light up a candle and look around, and they could not find a source anywhere. But wherever they, whenever they went into a particular room, the noise in that room would stop. But then it would start in another room. It's like they were being led on a wild goose chase. Then later, after winter of 1817 had fully set in, the kids began screaming in the middle of the night. Just as they were about to doze off to sleep, they would feel something tugging at their bed covers. Now, they didn't know what it was. Of course, the older boys, John Bell Jr. and Drury Bell, of course, got the blame for it. They were playing tricks on the younger kids. But then John and Lucy Bell would come in there anytime the kids would scream, the other ones would. They would put the candle around, look around. They wouldn't find any evidence that the older boys had been up or done anything. <clears throat> then the older boys started complaining of the same thing, and even of sounds that sounded like rats gnawing at their bedposts. So at this point, John Bell swore his family to secrecy and told them, you know, obviously there's something living here in this house with us. We don't know what it is, but it's something bad. So please do not tell anyone outside of our family. Don't tell anyone. A lot of bad things could happen to us if people find out about what's going on here. Well, that was, he, it was expected he would do that, swear to secrecy, because he was, at the time, an elder of the church and also involved in several other organizations, and nobody, the church or those organizations, pro probably would have had anything to do with him if he was talking about some evil spirit or something lurking in his house. went on, so did these disturbances. They kept hearing the rapping on the walls. They kept hearing chains being dragged across the floor. The kids, their bed covers would be pulled, and if they tried to resist, their hair would be pulled. There's one account of this legend that states that the children were even slapped, and then John and, Bell, John and Lucy Bell would run in there with a candle and look at the kids, and they would find welts on their faces. There's something very strong and very malevolent uh, in the Bell home. Well, as time went on and these things continued and they worsened, it took a toll on the Bell family. And before long, people in the community began to notice. They noticed the Bells always seemed very exhausted, had bags under their eyes. You know, they looked like, every day they looked like they'd been up all night long dealing with a spirit. And actually, that's exactly what had happened. They were been too scared to go to sleep, at least not at night.
because most of this happened, at least in the early part of the collision, it happened at night. Well, finally, James Johnson, who was a neighbor of John Bell, sat down with Mr. Bell one day and said, look, John, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about your wife, and I'm worried about your children. You all look like you're really worn out and worried about something. I know something's wrong with you. Something's going on. Can I help you? Well, since James Johnson was John Bell's next-door neighbor and also best friend, he confided in him about the disturbances that happened at the Bell home. Well, James Johnson burst out into laughter. He's like, John, you can't be serious. You're just getting old. You're losing your hearing. You're losing your sight. That's your kids doing all that. They're, they're, they're staging all that. You're just not sharp enough to catch them anymore. But then he agreed to go ahead and spend a night at the Bell home that night just to try and see for himself if anything spooky was really happening there. Well, they, James Johnson and his wife Patsy and the Bell family, they all ate dinner that night at the Bell house sang a few hymns, said a few prayers. Everything seemed fine that night. But then later, in the early morning hours, James Johnson was startled, startled right out of bed when he felt something beating on his bed. He jumped out of bed, lit a candle, looked around, could not find anything. His wife was awake in bed, terrified. He couldn't find anything that would be beating on the bed or trying to push it with such great force. Well, at that point, he knew something was really bad wrong. And he spoke up into thin air and said, Are you here? What are you? Why are you here? And according to legend, a chair in the room began to move. And he felt, Johnson felt, what felt like someone's breath, someone breathing right on his neck. I guess it was a hair on his neck standing up. And then he said, in the name of the Lord, I command you to stop. <coughs> as soon as he said that, it stopped immediately. Not forever, but it stopped for the rest of the night. And I doubt Mr. Johnson was able to sleep any that night, the rest of the night, but uh, it stopped that night nevertheless. And he told Mr. Bell that what happened to him seemed like there was some type of evil spirit, something that is mentioned in the Bible, like that was told about in the Bible, something evil, something very bad was happening at the house.